you ever been walking in the woods and had an eerie feeling you were being watched or followed? That a big toothy animal was just over your shoulder? Chances are, you may have been right. <laughs> Carnivores live amongst us, sharing our wild spaces and sometimes our developed ones. But how do they exist while so rarely being seen? And how do their behavioral adaptations to avoid us change the ecology of wild places? I'm researching these questions through the eyes of pumas, coyotes, bobcats, and foxes here in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Now imagine a zombie apocalypse, <laughs> bear with me, in which huge numbers of dangerous, incomprehensible beings are taking over our towns and forcing us to hide in the shadows. That's a lot like how pumas and other carnivores perceive us in their habitat. <laughs> we pose novel and profound risks to carnivores, and they react with extra caution. And while these tactics are necessary for their coexistence with us, they do not come without ecological effects. Carnivores are important regulators of ecosystems. They control the numbers of herbivores and smaller carnivores, allowing for healthier plant communities and increased biodiversity. My research looks at how carnivore fear changes how they interact with other species, causing a cascade of effects throughout an ecosystem. One of my dissertation foci is puma hunting behavior as a result of human influence. I have documented that pumas exhibit more risk avoidance behaviors when they kill deer near housing developments, which leads to food loss, ultimately causing them to increase the number of deer they kill per year by nearly 40%. Such a dramatic increase in hunting effort is likely to have negative effects on both pumas and their prey, but benefits scavengers that eat food left over from scared pumas. Another component of my work looks at competitive interactions among coyotes, bobcats, and foxes. All three of these species become highly nocturnal when they're disturbed by people, so this time constraint is likely to force them to compete more directly with one another for prey. To examine these relationships, I started a citizen science program called Conservation Scats, in which, just as it sounds, I go out with eager community members to collect animal feces. <laughs> Using novel genetic techniques, I can use these samples to examine how human disturbances change the way that carnivores compete for food. By using behavior to look through the eyes of carnivores, I've documented changes in the way that species interact when humans take the place as the top dog. My research can be used to better initiate holistic conservation plans that maintain natural animal behaviors and relationships. So next time you're walking through the woods and you get that eerie feeling, keep walking and let the carnivores amongst us come out of the shadows.